Hi, I'm Juhi Goyle. I am a rising senior, class of 2022 at Harvard College. I am pursuing a joint between a joint concentration between integrative bio and bioengineering on the electrical subtrack. So I'm currently working in the Samir Mitragotri lab which works on drug delivery and what I'm working on is the fabrication of cellular backpacks which are polymeric discs which hitchhike on cells like macrophages and monocytes and the way they're used is they can deliver drugs easily to places like the brain because they can traverse the blood-brain barrier easily or even to the middle of cancerous tumors. So one of my friends Eva, she worked with my old lab in conjunction with the Mithrago 3 lab. I went to her senior presentation this year and saw thought the research was cool, so I reached out to Dr. Mithrago 3 to start in possibly start in his lab this year to possibly explore a senior thesis. That's honestly how I got started because uh, the work looked cool and then he connected me to Neha, who's the graduate student I work with, and we've just been working together for the past two months. One place that it is hard to get drugs to is the brain because our blood doesn't really enter the brain. It's only certain cells that can cross through the blood-brain barrier and actually enter the brain. Macrophages and other um, immune-related cells are these cells that can. Cellular backpacks help kind of mitigate that problem of reaching the brain by just hitchhiking on the cells that can already go through the blood-brain barrier. The fabrication of these backpacks is a multi-step process. We make PDMS, which are polymeric molds. Um, we make those templates. We spin coat, which is basically just spreading different layers of polymers, drugs, and antibodies onto them. And then what we do is we print them, which is basically just transferring from the PDMS layer to a Petri dish where we can collect the backpacks. We then like concentrate them and bind them to macrophages. So over here I have a polymer, the dye, the fluorescent dye called rhodamine, um, dexamethasone, which is the drug that we want to load onto the backpacks, and acetone, which is just the base liquid for us to dissolve all of this stuff. And But I can just add some of it right now. Oh, that is empty. Sorry. So we have dexamethasone, which I'd put a little bit of in. Then I put the polymer base. And then we have our dye. Like even the smallest speck of this dye can cover over like 15 of these templates. Or like, sorry, 15 of these. So like a little bit dye goes a long way. Um, we just want to add some acetone in here acetone uh, evaporates pretty quickly so when we're working on this as soon as we add it we kind of just want to cap the solution just so that it doesn't really evaporate and then we lose the quantity of acetone that we're using so we have this right now you can't really see the color because the rhodamine hasn't dissolved That's just mixing it, and actually I might just add a little more, sorry. So this should be much pinker. But yeah, so you can see it's kind of pinker now. We have our polymeric solution, which we are going to spin coat onto our templates now. Oh yeah, so spin coating is basically a process where you use a machine that just really spins your templates around really fast so that it gives an even, an even layer of whatever material you want. We basically just, we have literally, it's just double-sided tape, which we put on here. You want a vacuum seals it on so you can like 
it kind of just sticks in place. What we do is we just take one of these squares, stick it on to the double-sided tape, and then quickly add a certain amount of the solution, put it on there, and then run it. How long does this take? 35 seconds. We take it off of here and then put it back with the other ones, do each one, and then just leave it to dry in the hood because it's um, organic liquid, so we don't want it to dry outside. Otherwise, it can be hazardous to health. And yeah, and we just do that again and again for as many squares as we need until we get enough backpacks, which we need to use. This lab has chemical engineers, bioengineers. Basically, I had help from a mechanical engineer. It has people who are pure bio. It has like everybody working on something because you need bioengineers to fabricate the backpacks. You need people who have a good knowledge of physics to see how the cell ba cellular backpacks are gonna withstand the shear stress that you get in the bloodstream. And then you need mechanical engineers to make it easier to actually do all this stuff on like a bigger scaled level. Just having a lot of different people from different disciplines in the lab means that if I have a question, I don't have to look really hard through papers or look for an expert in the field because we just have an expert on a random field, literally like two office spaces away. So it's really cool because this is like what CS is kind of about like the intersection of so many different things.